In today's video, we'll be reviewing a brand new LEGO Star Wars 2023 September 1st set. This is going to be set number 75362, Ahsoka Tano's T6 Jedi Shuttle. This retails for $80 in the USA, comes with 599 pieces, four brand new exclusive minifigures, and today I want to figure out, is it worth your money? This is going to be an unsponsored, unbiased review. Let's get into it. So I've had pretty high expectations for this set. Maybe part of that is due to being hyped for the show, but starting off here with the box art, it does a very good job at representing the true set you will end up building. Shows off the features and minifigures also. The instruction manual is the same as ever, 102 pages of building, and then a look at the other 2023 September sets in the back. Here are the extra pieces included, a highlight being an extra Hugh Yang backpack tile, then you do get a fresh pack of dark bluish gray visors, range finders as well. Now let's get into the four new exclusive minifigures, two of which we have never seen in Lego form before. Starting off, we have our first live action based Ahsoka Tano minifigure. She has everything to be expected with an Ahsoka figure, a brand new headpiece, very accurate torso and leg print, and even for the first time ever on an Ahsoka, arm printing. She has a double-sided head, two clear lightsabers, and overall for me, this is a to-be-determined possible top three LEGO Star Wars minifigure of 2023. Moving on, we have an updated Sabine Wren. This, of course, is based off her outfit in the new Ahsoka series, which, in my opinion, is a step down from her armor and Rebels, but the LEGO version does a great job at replicating the source material properly. She includes her blasters, but also a green lightsaber and an extra dark purple hairpiece if you want to display her with no helmet. I'm a little disappointed there's not too much print or detail on that hairpiece, but nonetheless, it is a nice inclusion. She also has a double-sided head to add some variety. Professor Hu Yang is up up next and this is a very controversial minifigure to me at least it is the first time we have ever gotten him in lego so it was always a mystery as to how they would execute him they went with the full regular minifigure part approach which is not new for lego star wars droids but when i envisioned them making him i always thought he'd look a little bit more like the 2010 general grievous medical droid but the figure presented is decently detailed new head mold torso and leg printing that also includes a wrench and a backpack printed tile Overall, not what I expected, but it'll take some getting used to for sure. Lastly, we have what I want to consider my favorite minifigure of this set, that being the new Inquisitor-like character called Merrick. At the time of filming this, we know next to nothing about him other than his armor is absolutely badass. He has a brand new helmet piece, brand new armor, but lots of good print underneath that armor as well. Double-sided Inquisitor lightsaber like we've seen before, and at this point, just a plain black head underneath because LEGO does not probably want to spoil uh, what character or what species it may be underneath there yet. Also, a spot to clip his lightsaber hilt on the back which is always nice so overall i gotta say doing a quick close-up at these four minifigures these are four beautiful brand new minifigures lego really executed these pretty much you know spot on you know very accurate to the source material only a few minor tweaks i think that would look nice but uh, nonetheless this is a stacked lineup of minifigures i think so getting into the actual ship now, there is one glaring thing that I've seen being discussed a lot. The Lego set we get comes in a dark red and dark gray color scheme, but some are saying a dark red and white combo would be more accurate. I personally think that also, but the two colors we did get definitely does not look bad by any means. First and most obvious play feature is we do have some stud shooters up at the front. Of course, really only there for playability. And like most of them on sets, if you do want to take them off for a more accurate approach, it is very easy to do so. So sadly, there is very limited interior space in this model with really only three points of entry, two of which are really only there to store extra minifigure accessories, such as the wrench, lightsabers, blasters, and hairpiece. The most important interior spot, though, is the cockpit, which in my opinion looks a little weird as is. While it is size accurate for this scale, I think something about it just doesn't look quite right to me. What also doesn't seem right is I can only fit one minifigure inside of it. In the older version of the T6 shuttle, you could actually fit two minifigures and in universe you could probably even get a couple more in there if you wanted putting ahsoka in the cockpit definitely looks nice though it's not crammed and luckily the windscreen does shut all the way without hitting her head and then also really quickly on the back of the ship there are four thrusters and technically some little guns you can move up and down if you want to without a doubt the biggest play feature in a set like this is the fact you can lift it up 
turn the wings and fly the ship like it truly does in universe this is a very simple play feature that works and looks very good all besides one glaring issue the underside of the wings have next to no detail and are predominantly pure gray which sure if you want to get technical you don't have to look at that side but i think even adding an additional 25 dark red wedge plates and regular plates underneath to get a little bit of dark red detail there would have gone a long way into making this set even better Something I do appreciate greatly on a set like this is the inclusion of some landing gear. It certainly helps allow this set to sit on a flat surface without being lopsided or falling over. They easily just pull out whenever you need to actually use them. One thing that is a little sad to see in a set like this is they included no way of displaying this ship in flight mode, which would have just made this set even more perfect. I do know some people wonder about stickers on sets and how many there are and whether or not they are difficult to put on, so I wanted to bring it up for this set really quick. There are luckily only six stickers in this set, four of which are smaller and very simple to put on with really no risk. The last two, however, though, definitely take a little bit more precision, and they're one of those stickers where if you mess them up, it really could affect the entire look of the build, sadly. One last thing that isn't a direct feature of this set, but I found very enjoyable, and you may too, is the fact that this set is very satisfying to spin around and have a great time with doing so. With all the minifigures, set details, and features out of the way, let's take a quick minute and give my final raw thoughts and opinions. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that review right there. Definitely a new style for me. And for this last minute right here, let's just kind of uh, go over my raw opinions and thoughts and kind of just uh, kind of just end off the video this way. So uh, what I can say off the bat is this set definitely did not exceed my expectations. Um, you know, I think going into this, I was very excited. You know, we got part of the hype of the show. I think the minifigures are fantastic. I still think they are. Again, I think there are some areas where they could have done a little bit better. Sabine maybe could have used a little arm printing. Uh, I think Ahsoka definitely could have used those venturous lightsaber hilts. That's one thing that I definitely think they should have brought back. Other than that, Yu Yang will definitely take some getting used to. Uh, Merrick, I think, is a beautiful minifigure. And the uh, bottom line of it, you know, the ship itself, I guess I'll hold it up here really quickly. Um, it, it's small. You know, I will say this. Look, it is just a prime example of the more and more stuff they do for Lego Star Wars, you know, the smaller it gets, I feel. Do I think it's worth $80? Uh, in my opinion, I think this is a prime example of a 20% off sale would work wonders. You know, I think you're getting your your value proposition here for 80. I do think they could have bumped up, you know, another 25 pieces on the piece count, you know, made that underside a little bit more colorful. And, uh, you know, even then, you know, for all the price per piece fanatics, you know, once you kind of get into like the, you know, maybe, maybe the 630 range, maybe, maybe even 650 on the piece count, um, it starts making that $80 price point look a little bit better. Again, you are getting four new beautiful minifigures. And with all that being said, I think my final rating for this set as is for an $80 package with everything included, the build experience, how the set looks, how it makes me feel, the look of the minifigures, the accuracy, and overall just my subjective opinion. I think I'm actually going to throw it like an 8, 3 out of 10, I think. I All right, guys, so that is everything for today's review. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this style a little bit better. And um, there's my, you know, honest score at the end. I think you guys will be satisfied if you guys get it. Just expect the fact it will be pretty small once you actually build it up. So, again, if you are kind of in that camp of not liking how LEGO is making a bunch of stuff smaller these days, you might not like this set as much as you think you will. But uh, bottom line of it, hopefully I can bring you more LEGO Star Wars 2023 Summer Set reviews here soon. Leave your thoughts down below. Are you guys picking this up day one for 80? Or are you guys going to wait for a sale on it? Leave all your thoughts on this set down below. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye, guys, and stay safe.